Hey there, greetings to my people from here at the Great Start Studio, where all of my drumming dreams are coming true. It's true. So this is where I'm shooting a video of the entire instructional series here in the studio, the 13 volumes of the London's Great Start Drum Set series. It's printed and the Kindle versions are available on Amazon as well as on my website, which is London's Great Start Drum Set. You can go there and check it all out. Uh, all my new videos from the studio will be available on that website uh, for online lessons. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, talking about revealing some of my original drum heroes, uh, what I call the Artistic Influence series, uh, drummers that uh, I can actually see some of their playing in mine, uh, that they've influenced me to that level. Drummers who truly changed my playing for the better um, all the way through. There's some influence there in my actual hands and feet when I play. Uh, if in the studio, if I made posters of all the tribute, as a tribute to all the people, it, it'd just be every inch of every wall would be covered. It's just that these are the ones that have really, really influenced me in some foundational sort of way. So I made these posters as a tribute and a reminder of these great players. Uh, they're in my office. I'll be showing you. Um, um, there's just too many to, to, to cover them all, but, um, but a handful, a handful that have really actually, uh, I can see in my play. There's so many great players who have inspired me in my drumming, but uh, these are the select ones that have some way become a part of my style, my diversity, my teaching, my writing, and uh, help me develop uh, my unique voice, um, which is a hard thing to find. You have to really listen inside. So anyway, enjoy the whole Artistic Influence series, and I'll be running them down, and I'll see you at the end. So first up in my posters here in the office is Phil Earhart of Kansas. And he has been with Kansas since forever. And the very first record I heard uh, of Kansas was Left Overture. I heard the song Carry On My Wayward Son. Never heard anything like it. Uh, it was bending all of the rules for songs that I had heard previous to that, and somehow I was hooked. I was hooked on this progressive idea of having any form that you wanted, and they just did that. They did that in that song, and then when I bought the record, which has the old man and the scroll and the pen, and and man, that I, I stared into that record cover so many hours just looking at it going, man, this is what a writer is. This is like somebody who just sits and scrolls out writing by himself. And that music really affected me. It affected me more than I knew at the time. His playing was unusual in that he had a thing that he always kind of played the bass drum on the E's and the U's. Almost like kind of like a single bass funky, unusual, I don't know, double bass simulation in his meter playing. And that turned me upside down. I'd never, I'd never approached any kind of grooves like that. And of course, all the odd meters and then all the unusual changes. When I got the record, there, it was way more changes than that song. That song was like the commercialized version of them at that time. And so, uh, yeah my mind was bending all over the place trying to figure out this record. And uh, it really, really affected me. I, I followed them for decades with their records and, and their changes and their commercialization and, and uh, huge sound, you know, like everyone was doing through the 80s. Um, but I always loved it when they just broke the rules, somehow made a song that just wasn't conventional. And that really has affected me. I, I have a huge love for soundtrack music. I just listen through like all of the works of Hans Zimmer and man, I just, I, uh, man, if I, if I could go back and have another life, it would be as a composer uh, and that kind of emotional sort of, you never know what's going to happen in the track. I used to just buy soundtracks just, just at random, just to see what kind of other kind of music would be floating around in the background and it's always interesting it's always emotionally charged in some way and formed really unusual and uh, so I have a huge uh, love for that and I just have to say all of that really comes back to Phil Earhart he has no idea 
really no idea how much of an influence he's been on me and I'm sure on, on many others as well. But that was the first record, Left Overture was the first record I'd ever heard that just didn't have any rules. And I was just, you know, just, just introducing myself to music at that time. And I heard Carry On My Wayward Son on the radio and I'm like, what in the world is this song? And of course, that song went on to be like number one forever, you know, the record and, and uh, for airplay. And uh, understandably so, um, it's got the soaring vocals and, and that, you know, so everybody can follow along, even though there's all these changes in it. So um, anyway, big, big influence right from the beginning, more than I even registered at the time. Uh, thank you, Phil Earhart. <laughs> 